All right, good day to all the do-it-yourself geeks who spend countless hours trying to figure out uh, how to save a few bucks by building all the things yourself that are just way too expensive. Uh, at our church, we recently began programming uh, our lighting to go along with our worship services. And uh, recently, we were at the Seeds Conference by Church on the Move in Tulsa, and their lighting director um, was talking about the importance of a haze machine to accentuate the lighting in your room. Um, for us, the bad part was neither myself nor our church had the $1,200 to drop on a real haze machine. Uh, therefore, uh, our journey began, and I found a post in a DJ forum describing the basic design for a haze machine, but the guy had not followed the project through to completion. So, uh, anyway, I've since learned that the uh, yeah, oil-based hazers like this are referred to as crackers. Um, they utilize uh, the same concept. Uh, nonetheless, here's the rundown of what went into it. Um, first, I purchased a 5-gallon bucket and a lid from Lowe's. I also picked up about 10 feet of air hose and some hose clamps that obviously fit on that um, air hose. Uh, I spent more than this um, through trial and error, but uh, those items should cost you about $10. At Walmart, um, I picked up four dozen um, wiffle golf balls, uh, they sell them to practice with, and uh, something like 20 pints of food grade mineral oil, which is in the pharmacy area. Uh, this is sold as a laxative, so people might think you uh, have an eating disorder um, when you buy uh, pretty much every bottle they have for sale. But uh, don't worry about what they have to say. This is your haze machine. Um, those items should cost you about 50 bucks. Um, which keep in mind uh, the average uh, cost of a gallon of haze fluid is going to be about the same. So uh, don't freak out yet. Then I leased, I went to uh, a local salvage yard that sells CO2 tanks. And I leased a 50 pound CO2 tank and got it filled. Um, that cost was about $95. Uh, the tank lease is like $120 for five years. So it's next to nothing over the time. Um, I paid $65 for one year, and every time you get it filled, it is uh, $25. Bucks. Um, the next item needed would be a CO2 regulator. I purchased this off of eBay. Um, the one I got is for a beer keg, uh, and I, I paid about 40 bucks shipped for it. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at a CO2 regulator is that uh, the barb or the output from that regulator, you want to make sure that... Um, it's going to match up with what your hose is. Now, me, the one I bought, had a 5 sixteenths barb, which made it really rough for me to get to the hose I wanted to utilize. Um, I ended up having to get some extra fittings that if you do your homework ahead of time, uh, hopefully you won't have to do. Um, I also used uh, some stuff I had laying around in my house, um, such as a computer fan. Uh, I had some liquid nails, some black spray paint, um, an old uh, plastic tub, uh, that you would store junk in. Um, it was all cracked up, but I utilized it. Um, a scrap piece of 2x4 and a scrap piece of PVC pipe. Um, a friend of mine also tracked down uh, when we're reading about what this does and, and what the what this ends up what ends up happening in this haze machine is the, the CO2 is forced through a nozzle and it atomizes this oil into the air. So um, it makes the tiny you know these tiny particles that float in the air and it's called atomizing so um, I, I read in this forum uh, that there are uh, furnace nozzles that do the same thing to oil in a furnace um, they work different because these nozzles force fluid and air through one nozzle blah 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 but we ended up getting one of these nozzles and utilized it um, although I wouldn't think you would need to um, I would look at uh, possibly like uh, an air needle um, that would go on the end of like a pump for uh, basketball or football you know or maybe um, we even talked about the idea of, of building this out of instead of using all air hose um, attaching PVC pipe to it and putting a cap on the PVC pipe with a hole in it essentially um, you just want to force uh, your CO2 into this uh, bucket of liquid at a high enough level at a high enough force or pressure that it agitates it and atomizes it um, uh, in testing, we accomplish this with as you know without a nozzle at all, even with a a regular 
open hose. The smaller the nozzle though and the higher the pressure, um, the less air you're going to have to use um, to make your haze. So uh, those are things to keep in mind. Um, to build your hazer, uh, first um, uh, cut, cut your piece of 2x4 to the width of the bottom of your bucket and drill a hole about one inch from the end of that 2x4 um, that's the width of your scrap PVC pipe or this could be a stick um, it could be a pole pretty much anything what what this is going to serve to do is it's going to hold your nozzle in one place uh, so it doesn't move around on you so um, pretty much anything could be this but you want to drill a hole in your 2x4 that's going to hold that stick or that piece of PVC um, uh, in place so um, then take your uh, 2 by 4 put it in the bottom of your bucket stick your PVC pipe in that hole and uh, then um, take your lid or yeah take your lid and um, I drilled um, something like six to eight holes that were the size of my hose um, in the top of my lid now one of the holes um, my hose ends up going through so that hole needs to be um, close to but probably not directly over your PVC pipe so that your hose can go through there and uh, and so once you got once you got your holes drilled um, stick your air hose through uh, that hole that you've drilled specifically for it that's near your PVC pipe and fasten your nozzle to the end of that hose utilizing a hose clamp and then zip tie the hose and the nozzle to the PVC pipe about four inches from the bottom of, of your bucket. Now you can experiment with this height um, and see what works best for you and uh, and go from there. The uh, Obviously the lower the nozzle the less fluid you would need in your bucket um, for it to be at the nozzle's height. Uh, the next step would be to take the wiffle golf balls and the uh, hay solution or the mineral oil and uh, put those both in the bottom of the bucket. Um, you can experiment with how much uh, of the mineral oil you want to put in there. Um, the uh, the amount or how much, you know, how deep the mineral oil is affects uh, how your haze machine works. It also affects how it sounds. So if there's not very much, then you hear the air kind of going crazy. If there's a lot of uh, hay solution in there, it sounds like it's gurgling. So um, just experiment with what works there for you, um, but you would put those items in the bucket at that point. Um, to be honest, I don't really know what the uh, what the golf balls do. Um, I would, you know, if you want to save some money, like 20 bucks, you could think about trying it without the golf balls initially and see how that works. I am. I don't know if they really do anything, but they might. Um, the next step is to cut a hole in the top of your bucket um, that's about the size of your CPU fan or your computer fan. Um, a little, obviously, the hole needs to be a little smaller than your fan so it doesn't fall through it. Then I just took some liquid nails and and attached that fan to the top of the lid, um, but I attached it so that the fan blows into the lid. Um, and the reason I did that is because in testing I noticed that. Um, the haze uh, with the CO2, the CO2 and the and the fluid ends up being colder than the the ambient temperature of the room. So that haze stayed in the bottom of my bucket, um, and eventually it would probably condensate on the lid and fall back into the bucket. So this fan blowing back into the bucket is going to force those particles out of the bucket into the air, um, and uh, so that's a good idea. So you got that fan blowing into there. Um, I wired it up to an old, uh, you know, wall wart, uh, 12 volt wall wart that I had laying around, and it worked fine. Um, and that's it. Now take your hose and uh, fasten it to your CO2 tank uh, via your um, regulator. And um, for me, um, for us, and the nozzle we're using, we noticed that um, the best results are happening at about 50 um, pounds per inch. And uh, now that we've got it working right and all of our leaks worked out, um, it, it seems that we're utilizing about two pounds of air, CO2, um, two pounds of CO2 per hour. So uh, um, that's something that's manageable for us financially. The original design I read about on the forum um, actually utilized an air compressor instead of a CO2 tank uh, to agitate the oil. Um, this would probably work. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm sure it would work because we tested it. Uh, we opted to use a CO2 tank 
um, because it's quieter and an air compressor would kick on after a while but if you have a large enough facility or say you got a soundproof room somewhere you can put a big ugly air compressor in and run the hose out of um, that might be the way you want to go you could also um, operate it um, more easily uh, um, remotely uh, but for us we used a CO2 tank because um, it's quieter and then also um, there was some science about it the nicest um, uh, hazers that are out there actually utilize CO2 tanks um, to uh, to do this and there was there was a lot of talk about CO2 um, helping to create smaller particles in the air um, which helps to increase the hang time of your haze and it also for some reason keeps the uh, the oil from collecting on surfaces if the particle is smaller um, I don't really know how or why that works but um, that's you know part of why we went for it uh, looking at all this um, depending on what route you went whether you utilized a uh, air compressor or a co2 tank I would think someone could build a rock and hazer um, for right around hundred and fifty dollars um, which is nothing compared to the twelve hundred dollar price range of elsewhere for us um, when we get the 1200 bucks to buy a real um, hazer, we will probably do it. This was an easy way for us to get it going in our church and start utilizing the haze to see how people reacted to it. Um, any input you have, any ideas you, you might have to help make this a little more efficient, um, for us, I would love to utilize as little air as possible. If you know of a nozzle option that would be cheap and a good idea for everybody, please share it. Um, uh, shoot me an email, uh, seanames at flfministries.com, and uh, I would love to hear from you guys. So uh, thanks for checking this out, and uh, happy hazing. <laughs>